the tall kid on your left. And when I was 8-10 years old, my mother bought me my first pet turtle. And I didn't know it at the time, but that was the beginning of a lifelong love affair with turtles in general. When the family settled down in the town of Mont Royal, Quebec, I was about 13 years old when turtles became a full obsession. The basement of our house was full of aquariums and of course lots of turtles. Mainly red-eared sliders from Florida, classic pet shop turtle of the 60s and the 70s, but I also had baby snapping turtles, Malaysian box turtles, and tortoises. Even when they died, I couldn't get rid of them, so I collected them in formaldehyde. My father, Michel, was a top recording engineer in Montreal in the 60s and the 70s. When he decided to buy some toys for himself, he bought this Honda 90. But it rapidly became my bike. When I was about 14 years old, my father took me on a surprise trip to a property he had just bought in St. Agnès of Dundee. It was a little chalet and his dream was always of becoming a gentleman farmer with chickens, ducks and of course lots of dogs, mainly Labradors. My dad and I really love dogs. When I was 16 years old, I dream of having a Husqvarna. I was really into everything motocross and the Husky was my favorite bike. I asked my father permission and he let me buy this classic Husqvarna with the mirror tank. I now had my own Husky and of course I brought it to my father's estate which was ideal for trails and expeditions. I was studying cinema in Montreal and at the time my teacher asked us to deliver an end-of-class student movie. I said to my friend Frank, let's do a film with my husky, of course. And in some far-fetched pursuit with a tractor, which my father had, it was uh, just like our cheap budget Steve McQueen movie. My father's farm began to expand with all kinds of construction projects. And lots of Labradors and baby Labradors. I even had my own black lab, it was called Jimmy, for Jimi Hendrix. Meanwhile, I still liked turtles and during my moto expeditions, I discovered lots of wild ponds, untouched by humans. And in them, I noticed my first Quebec turtles. The North American painted turtle and the common snapping turtle. I even found baby snapping turtles everywhere. I took care of them to give them a chance in their early years. Then I bought a Suzuki 125, so I had friends to ride with. 
And then I bought another Suzuki, a PE-175. And my brother shot some Super 8 of me in action. My brother Luke is five years younger than me. He was about 13, 14 and started to come more often to my father's camp. He would hitch a ride in the back and off we went to shoot more Super 8 of me in full action. With all these rivers and ponds to explore, my brother and I started to do more and more scuba diving, mainly snorkeling and spear gun fishing. We were always looking for turtles in new areas. On this particular day, I speared this big pike and it became our supper. Looking for turtles and rescuing them had become a full obsession. Even in the city, I would save turtles like this one I found trying to cross a traffic street near the Lachine Canal in Montreal. For me and my brother, there was no rest for our mission. Now, let's retrace a typical journey and migration for our Quebec turtles. For us, it starts mainly in the spring and near our chalet in the town of Huntington, Quebec with the Shadowgate River going right through it. It's a nice river, not too wide, not too deep, pleasant for kayaking and even swimming. But in downtown Huntington, there's a cement dam and all migrating turtles coming upstream hear that thundering noise and stay well away of its potential trouble. So they make their move well before the dam, exiting the river a few miles upstream, where it is much more quiet and safe. Instinctively, they climb the banks of the river and try to make their way inland. I say try because this is the most dangerous part of their journey, where cars, traffic, human activity and predators like dogs can spell doom for most of them. If they manage to cross these obstacles, their reward will be an isolated river or pond, where they can find a mate and food. So now, let's follow more closely 
two young females on their migrating journey. After avoiding traffic cars, hot asphalt, they might cross path with other unsuccessful turtles. Like this big snapping turtle crushed by a truck. Going only on instinct and pure determination, our two little females finally crossed the last major road before sanctuary about a mile inland. Snapping turtles face the same obstacles and are even more at risk because they're a little bit slower and shyer. That is why my brother and I have stopped the car numerous times to give them a helping hand. Always making sure to grab them by the tail if you value your fingers. Meanwhile, our two little females have made it through the relative safety of a large stretch of grasslands. Still being very cautious and after a small break, they resume their trek heading directly into the forest. Here they might cross path with garter snakes taking in the sun or hunting for leopard frogs and forest frogs. After crossing the forest, our two little females emerge on a sandy plain. They can smell their final destination. And small streams and rivers are a good hint of a large body of water up ahead. But sadly, it is also where they part ways and head in two different directions. They look for each other one last time and attack the last leg of their journey solo. Here the ground is all sand and easy to navigate. It's the final sprint and this turtle redoubles its effort to get there. Although it is very tired and hungry, this turtle knows that the rewards up ahead are going to be well worth its extraordinary effort relative to its small size. And here's why this turtle has traveled dozens of miles to get to this pristine pond deep in the virgin Quebec forest where ducks often bring fish eggs in their feathers, abundance of frogs and their eggs in various stages of growth,
salamanders and small fish are all potential food and a good indicator of a healthy pond. This little turtle is only a few yards away from its oasis. After traveling for weeks, coming down the Shadogi River from the United States, after avoiding traffic and predators, it finally reaches its new home and a whole new life in this small paradise in the Quebec countryside. Now let's retrace our human travels for me and my brother. After leaving Montreal, driving towards Huntington, we will often travel different roads and explore new territory. And this gives us a chance to take a lot of artistic pictures of all sorts. Our headquarters are just ahead of this final crossroad. Okay, people, here we are at our Aqua Turtle Shop headquarters. We're getting ready to bring our two latest turtles to our secret pond. And you know, when you do all that traveling and those motocross adventures, you have to do maintenance. So uh, what my brother Luke is uh, starting to do now is uh, preparing to do a major operation on uh, one of our uh, Yamahas. Uh, the front torque is uh, broken or very stiff, but uh, maintenance is uh, is a must. So uh, Luke is uh, preparing to do a major thing. Luke, why don't you point out there where we're going to be working today? Well, today uh, that's a big job. It's um, we have to change the bearing. They're on the front fork because those bearing there's there's two right bearings. Right in there, the, the yeah, there's one on top and yes. one on the bottom, and um, eventually dirt gets in there and it gets stiff, and that's where we felt this summer that it was stiffer. Yeah, the stiffer. bearings are uh, like square almost. <laughs> it, it just uh, it's They're a kicking, so there might be a broken ball in there. So we have to change those two bearings, and to do that. Unfortunately, we have to uh, disassemble all the front assembly exactly to, uh, to remove the, the bearing underneath here underneath there So we're going to start with the wheel then right remove the two forks uh -huh. Take off the handle and then we're going to access the bearings. So uh, 
uh, one, one, one piece at a time. Yeah, so get started on that. Yeah. And uh, this of course is our main headquarters for the aqua turtle shops. On the second floor there, uh, we've got all our aquariums, all our turtles in transition. Some, uh, some are just healing from getting hit by on the road. You've seen our setup here for the, the motorcycles. Uh, usually we travel me, uh, my brother and uh, his son, so it's often a three-way expedition. My nephew Mathieu literally grew up on and around motorbikes all his life. And to our great satisfaction, he rapidly became part of our mission. After a bit of training, he was one of us. Over the years, my brother has read many maintenance manuals, and we tackle all kinds of repair jobs. And especially giving the carburetor a nice cleanup almost every spring is a good idea. Now back to today's task. the front wheel that goes off. Okay, so part one. Yeah. Don't lose the small parts. No, put it them back together. So okay. The same on the other side. And there goes the front wheel. Put the nut back in. Because we're not sure when we'll put that back together. Okay. Don't want to lose any parts. Next, my brother takes out the brake pad from the left wheel rod. Okay, the wheel is gone. It's gone, the brake line is just uh, right, loose, right. loose off. So we're ready now, we've taken out the four bolts uh, on the holder and we're ready. One just, of the shafts. We're just sliding out. Oh, nice, nice. Fork. Nice and easy. That simple. There's one. And the other one. We'll just turn it around with our hand. It should come right off. Okay, there goes the other shaft. There we go. Okay, so here's the problem. In there yeah, are the, the bearings. The and bottom there. bearing and the top bearing are exactly. probably finished. So to access that we have to loosen the top screws and so we have to remove the handle. We'll just remove it and Put it on the side we don't have to take out all the cables got you we don't, don't want all that job for now exactly just loosening those screws so we can move the handle get the, the handlebar out of the way yeah this, this it's one. the only way to reach the bearings and all yeah. that stuff in there it's probably completely dry by now yeah we haven't done that in what well, 10 years at least <laughs> It's not too complicated if you got the right tools, but... Yeah, uh, the complicated stuff is coming up. Exactly. <laughs> Removing the bearings. Exactly. Yes. Okay, there goes the handlebars. Yeah. There's the choke. And now we can reach choke. our shaft there. It's the hardest thing to reach. Yeah. Okay, so uh, the top, you just screw it off with your hands and... <laughs> <laughs> no, no, we have to work hard. <laughs> yeah. Because that was sealed uh, from like a lifetime of uh, stuff. That's what we do, so we took... Yeah, yeah, so we used a hammer. Use a hammer to bang it, because it was... It was uh, pretty... Exactly, we were using the, the hammer like this. Fry it off and... And finally the screw... Puts a bit of uh, 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 grease in there, so... And now, no, now the pièce de résistance, it's the top off. nut is coming off. So this is coming off. Exactly. And this will give access to... Yes. We have to remove this part. Exactly, that's to, where the problem is. Because the bearing are. is underneath there. Exactly. Okay, so remove this part and we have to... Special tool? Yeah, I hope it fits. Oh boy. Should fit. Oh. Oh, that was easy. Didn't need a special tool. No. To well, this one will be tight. Oh yeah, this one's going to be tighter. That's right against the whole shaft so there. there. There's a seal here. Let me see. And we'll try this one. Okay. Oh, not that nice. bad. Nice. Not bad either. Let's 
Yeah. Oh boy, I can hear the sand yeah. falling off. Little rocks. Yeah, I think it's clean. Oh yeah, that was dry as a bone. No more grease. The bearings, we'll look at them later. They're probably square by now. <laughs> and there goes the whole shaft. Oh man. There's the surprise. Okay. And this is falling down. This gives access to the bottom bearing. You see here. So it's not that bad. It's not it's damaged. It looks dry and there's the I thought the problem it. was right in here. Oh, so the bearings don't look too bad. No. They look round. They're Something is it? They're not broken. It's some rust. They're not broken. Is it, is it sand in the shaft? You see little marks inside there. There's still some grease in there. This is not bad. So, where was the major stiffness coming from? I'm looking at down the shaft. Doesn't look too bad. Maybe it was too, just too tight. Or just needed grease. New grease. Hmm. Okay. Okay, so you've put back the shaft and already, yeah. already. Oh my god, it just it's looks very easy. Oh, like power steering. Yeah. Okay, so I think that was all Good. just a nice cleanup. Now you're tidying it up. Oh so my god, what a difference. Easy. Oh yeah, it looks much better. A bit more. Okay. Superb. That's going to be a big difference. Okay, the rods come back on. The fork come back on, yeah. So before we tighten this, we, this needs to be aligned, so... And just put everything back loose, align it, and then we'll tighten everything. Yeah, there we go. The handlebars are back on. Now we're working on the brake pad. Put the wheel back on. And we're almost ready. All right, so handlebars are back. Luke just put the wheel back on. Cleaned it, grease. The brake pad is back on. So yeah. we're in the final adjustments. And we're almost ready to go. And there we go, the wheels back on, the handlebars are tightened, doing the final tune-ups. So there we go, it took about what, Luke, uh, two hours? Two hours of work, yeah. For sure, but now... We didn't replace the bearing because they were still good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So if you replace the bearing, then it's maybe a two hour job or a exactly. four hour job. But uh, look at the difference. Oh yeah, look at the difference. Just a finger and... This moves like butter. Yeah. And uh, before, we, I think we showed you how stiff it was. So this was the thing to do. So we're gonna clean up. We're gonna get our patient. Two more uh, North American painted turtles we saved. Let me get them out for you. It, again, it's two little females. This one's a bit smaller than this one, but uh, they were crossing the road and uh, Probably if I didn't pick them up, they would have get squashed by a car or a truck. So uh, Pat looked at the motorcycles. 
These guys are ready to go home. I've got the special uh, container here. This is to carry my turtles. And uh, we're going to ride all the way to the secret place. Here they are, they're ready to go. So uh, next shot, secret location for the turtles. See you soon. Of course, we never forget our camera equipment and take lots of pictures. And we're off! Today, my nephew Mathieu is leading the way. This first stretch is all asphalt roads for about a couple of miles. And finally, we take a left turn into the pine forest. These trails are semi-wild and we always take it easy, avoiding falling trees and branches. This particular spring, it had rained a lot and my nephew Mathieu rides right into thick mud. Whoa. First obstacle, I'll stop. Oh my god. Every spring we face new swamps and mud ponds, but it sure makes for cool shots. Now back to our trip, restart. Luke avoids the mud trench and wings it through the forest. Et puis, et puis là, 
Mathieu has not memorized all the trails just yet and needs some directions from my brother. We ride in these open trails for about another mile. And finally, we emerge from the forest in open sand dunes, relics of ancient lakes from long ago. Here we must be more alert and prudent because the sand is deep and slippery. Using both legs to keep your balance is a good idea. But the sand dunes is also a chance to have a little fun and take more great pictures.
until you crash and burn. By no means we are not motocross riders and always take it nice and slow. If we were to crash here and have serious injuries, we would be in a lot of trouble. Since we are in the middle of nowhere, miles away from hospitals. After all the sand dune fun, we re-enter the forest on our way to our secret turtle pond. But first we make a final pit stop at my favorite tree in the whole world. A giant pine tree that looks at least 500 years old. Over my 50 years of expedition, I always come to visit this tree. Not only is it majestic and ancient, but it's the last survivor of a bygone forest from long ago. I first discovered this tree way back in 1974. Here's my first picture of the tree with my girlfriend Marie-José posing in front of it. Over the decades, we always make sure to visit the tree at least once every summer. Here are all my nephews and nieces having fun climbing. And Mathieu making his big jump off. Of course, I also use this tree as a backdrop for early turtle segues. I'm going to talk about this uh, little painted, North American painted turtle I found on the side of the road. It literally had been clipped by the tire of a car and uh, it cracked. It cracked and it cracked right through. And over here, it, it, this was caved in and it was bleeding. So I brought it home put in my big uh, fish tank and I stopped the bleeding and eventually uh, it ate and uh, it recouped after two months. And uh, this is just a stopping point with my favorite tree. Luke, take a good shot. So we say our final goodbyes and resume our journey into the forest towards the turtle pond. This part of the pine forest is truly magical. All the trees are mature pines, at least a hundred years old. The forest floor is thick with pine needles and the smell is like falling in a vat of pine scented car fresheners. Here we go, we made it to our destination. At first glance, looking at the pond from the forest, it's business as usual, with turtles swimming, 
sunbathing on their favorite rock or tree stump. We're, we made it. And there are my two subjects. And now we're going to the pond, the secret pond. Uh, very few people know about it. It's completely uh, wild with other uh, North American painted turtles and there's also snapping turtles and beavers. So uh, next take, they're going in the water. Come on. Snapping turtles are notoriously elusive and hard to spot. If they don't move, it's impossible to notice them. Now here is a perfect example. This looks like mud and floating algae. Nothing, right? Wrong. Okay, you guys. I was just making my rounds in the spring. Uh, just exploring different little ponds. Looking for turtles. Looking for turtles that are injured. Turtles that are not going to make it in this environment for the whole summer. And I showed you a close-up. But there's a snapping turtle there. They're very rare. I haven't seen one in four or five years. So I'm going to show you how well hidden they are. First, I'm going to take some protection. I'm going to grab it by the tail. There you go, medium sized uh, snapping turtle, about 10-12 years old, it looks healthy, it's not injured, but it's not going to make it in this small pond, so I'm going to carry it to uh, a bigger pond where it should have a chance for, uh, for a good summer. After moving it away from the mud hole, I made sure it had no visible injuries and appeared completely normal. And then I went about testing its classic snapping turtle trademark. Perfectly healthy turtle. So I put it back near a bigger pond. Well, there you go, you maneuver towards the uh, middle of the pond and uh, it's completely invisible. Nobody could see that snapping turtle. So it's gonna hide there for a while and it's gonna look for another pond maybe later. Here it is, our secret beaver pond full of turtles. There's no hunting, there's no pollution, so it's the ideal place. Follow me there, they're directly going in the pond, right in front of you live. Look, you okay? Yeah, they're right there. Look at that, you guys. They're gonna be a bit shy. I think they can even climb the beaver hut to uh, take some sun. Right there. Right there. Yeah. New home. Oh, I was like, I'm a poisson. I wish I take that call. Okay. 
L'eau n'est pas trop froide. Elle a perdu son ami, par exemple. Nice, nice. So these two little females are starting a new life in our pond. Over the years, we've even tried releasing Florida red-eared sliders in the pond. Not only to give them a better quality of life, but also to see if they would survive our brutal Quebec winters by successfully hibernating like their cousins. Some made it, others not. So we stopped this experiment for now. Even just walking in the woods, we will often find turtles in distress or loss. So again and again, we bring them back to our pond. Okay, Luke, bring it. It's perfect here. Bring yeah. It's well enough. So uh, Luke's got the turtle. It's still very shy. So this is it. This is the, uh, the final step. It's gonna make it because there's other North American painted turtles on here. They could be even some snapping turtles that we put. So here we go. It's gonna be released right here. And uh, it's gonna swim on its own. Okay. Every time we visit the pond, we stay very quiet to photograph the different visitors that are enjoying this ecosystem. Today, Canadian geese. Another day, a cormoran looking for food among the sunbathing turtles. Every knob you see in this picture is a turtle head looking right at us, confirming the health of the pond. Turtles and their friends are enjoying the sunny day. Anywhere they can climb and soak in the sun for as long as they can is today's objective. If it floats, it's a sun deck. Our comoran has eaten its fill and is now drying its feathers. And the Canadian geese are just resting after a long flight from up north. This turtle spent hours waiting for just the right conditions. But it was a cloudy day and it never climbed on top of this floating blob of algae. Someone help me! Same blob, different day, and two customers for sunbathing. Perfect conditions to shed old scales. Uh oh turtle traffic jam!
After all this work to find just the right spot and finally soak in as much sun as possible, the slightest suspicious movement and they're all gone. After all these adventures, we step up to the edge of the pond for a final look and goodbye. Especially if we only come back in the spring after a long winter. Here is a sample of the regular visitors to the pond, from herons to birds of prey to a rare albino squirrel. So we hit the road again, but this time we take a different trail on our way back to our headquarters. And this brings us to the far north corner of the pond where we can see the beaver dam in action and how effective it is to retain water especially in dry seasons keeping a nice flow of water for all the turtles the beavers are rarely seen and even harder to film or photograph but their activities are easy to notice and document. So you can see uh, near our uh, secret turtle pond is a lot of beaver activity. There you go, this uh, fresh cut from overnight maybe. So this is all near the beaver uh, dam and uh, they're very active. The beaver dam is also a great spot for fun time part two. Super Splash Zone!
make it true. Okay guys, so we've made it to the north end of our secret pond. And as you can see, the water quality is perfect. There's no people, so the breeding environment is good. But just wanted to show you one of the aspects that we can't control. And this is, I mean, garbage and real bad garbage. There's actually a TV in there. That's from uh, the farmers who uh, probably own the land. You know, we don't own all the land, but some of it. And uh, we can't control that what they do. But that garbage is definitely polluting this pond. But what can you do? So uh, if you can stop these things, please help us. Okay, let's move on to our next spot. Look at this turtle trying to sunbathe in the middle of a toxic dump site. That's really outrageous. Here's Luke GPSing the exact coordinates of the dump so we can call Environment Canada and lodge a formal complaint. Here's a recent problem, illegal logging. Not only on our land, but everywhere it seems now. It really hurts when you see a hundred year old pine illegally cut down just for cash. Counting the rings on this freshly cut pine tree I figured it was at least 60 years old. Back to our marsh for a close-up of the toxic water. So here's the quality of the water. If it wasn't for all the garbage that you can see, the turtle will just come up this bank they follow their trails for years and years and they'd have a perfect ground to lay their eggs. This is all beautiful sand but uh, with all the garbage you can see how hard it is. So here's a perfect wide angle of the breeding ground and egg laying grounds for all the turtles, the snapping turtles and the the North American painted turtles. Luke, what do you think about the garbage? It's terrible, terrible. They should, they should stop to do that. Yeah, we have eggs here, just right here. We have yeah, here's a perfect last, example. Last year's batch of Luke, eggs. Luke found a perfect example. These eggs are from last year, but uh, there's probably a snapping turtle in the nest, and then uh, they just exit down to the pound. But first, they got across that the TV and all that junk so please stop the pollution please stop the pollution Terrible. because uh, we're losing our turtles they're getting rarer and rarer so let's move on to our next spot Luke you ready let's go let's go not too far from the turtle nesting ground we cross path with a garter snake hunting among the berry trees excellent idea it's time for a healthy snack. Then we hit the road in a fantastic trail lush with giant reeds and more wild streams everywhere. Oh boy, now it's my turn, duck and weave.
Splash Zone Part 2! <laughs> Over the shoulder cam! Oh, okay, whoa! whoa. <laughs> Back in a new part of the pine forest, we ride these nice open trails for about another 15 minutes. And finally, break time. Mathieu drinks a cool beverage and we all rest and take it easy for a while. After riding and taking pictures in the hot sun, sometimes for five, six hours in a row, it takes a toll on us old guys. One more selfie and we're back on the road. It's only a short ride to reach another of our favorite places. We call it the Star Wars Forest because all the pine trees are perfectly lined up just like the clone army in the Star Wars movies. It makes for nice and easy riding and a great spot to take pictures and selfies. So we leave our enchanted Star Wars forest and head back on the trails for another short ride to the main asphalt road leading back to our headquarters. It looks like easy riding, but after 6-7 hours, even Mathieu is a bit sore. We turn south and ride back home, nice and slow, enjoying another beautiful and successful day of moto and turtle adventures.
Before we reach our camp, we ride beside miles and miles of cornfields. And in the fall, we always enjoy watching the farmers do their harvest. The fall season is also a good time to take more great pictures. And there you have it, we've completed the loop back home. I hope you all enjoy this almost 50 year retrospective of our moto and turtle adventures. And next time you see a turtle crossing the road, you might just stop to help them make it. Thank you for watching and helping our Quebec turtles.